Hello. Uh, all right, so thanks everyone for uh, attending this presentation. Um, my name is uh, Johan Haleby, and uh, I work as a consultant in a company called the J-Way from Sweden. Uh, and I'm here today to talk a bit about uh, a framework that I founded called uh, Rest Assured. Um, and I've also found a couple of other open source frameworks. I founded PowerMock and uh, another one called Awitility uh, that I talked about here uh, uh, last year, actually. So if you're interested in these frameworks as well, you can check them out. Um, so what is uh, Rest Assured? Well, it's a, a Java framework, obviously, um, that you can use to test or uh, validate HTTP-based uh, or REST-based uh, systems. So it's built on top of uh, HTTP Builder, which is a Groovy framework. Um, and it has this uh, yeah, BDD-like specification syntax that you will see in a, in a second. And it's implemented in Groovy and in uh, Java. Uh, so, but, but everything that you use as a, as a yeah, developer, when you use it for, for testing these kinds of services, it's, it's all Java interfaces. Uh, so there's no need to, you know, configure Groovy or anything like that. It's just a standard dependency that you put in your, in your class path, and you're good to go. Uh, so it's really, 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 really simple to get started with uh, Rest Assured. So all you have to do, you know, to, to make a HTTP request is that, well, you simply write the verb. Why should it be harder than this? And then you pass in the, you know, a resource that you want to access. So you may be wondering, like, I mean, where does this actually end up? I mean, will this go to, like, uh, I don't know, google.com slash lotto or something like that? No, of course not. Since, since this framework focuses on testing, it will go to localhost 8080 slash lotto. Because, you know, this is typically where you, when you run Jet or something in a local machine, this is, you know, the port that you, that you use normally. So it's really simple to get started. So besides you know, sending a, a request, you also want to, to have some parameters with this request. So here you kind of get a feel a little bit of the, the DSL that is used in Rest Assured. So you start by doing a given and you specify some parameters maybe. So here you may be wondering if you know your HTTP, uh, so what, what kind of parameters is this? You know, we only specify parameter here. So will this be a, a query parameter or will it be, you know, in the in the message body as a form parameter. Well, the thing is here that it's kind of the same mentality that uh, we have in like Sinatra or Scalatra. We, we don't really care what, you know, what kind of parameter it is in this, in this case. So here we just want to send a parameter. I mean, I, I don't care which, which one it is. But since this is a GET request, and you may know that a GET request should not have a, a message body, so here it will actually be a, a query parameter by default. But if you specify a param and then do a, a post, then it will be a form parameter by default. And form parameters are located in the, in the message body, actually. And another thing that you should do if you specify parameters in a message body is that you should set the content type to, it's, it's very hard to remember, it's something like XWW URL form encoded or something like that. But rest assured does this for you, so you don't have to think about it. So that's nice. Uh, but of course, there may be situations, or maybe you just want to be, you know, more explicit about it. So you can, of course, specify which kinds of parameter that you want to send. So I, I usually prefer this since it's more explicit. But you know, you can choose whatever you like. And yeah, one little, it's a minor detail here, but it's also very. I mean, when you send parameters, you can also send actually a parameter with multiple values. So this is, I mean, the value here it's var. As var args uh, construct, so it's really simple to construct these kinds of things. And it's actually also possible to send query parameters and form parameters without any values at all. And this is also possible with rest assured very easily. And these are kind of things that, you know, it, it's not so easy to do with all, all, or with some other frameworks at least. So this is cool. Um, and you can of course specify headers and cookies and all that kind of things. And here you actually see, this is pretty much the full structure of the you know, DSL or, or API. So 
the kind of mentality behind it is that you begin by creating a request specification. So the given method call here is just a shortcut for creating a new request specification. So you begin with creating this request specification and you set the parameters and headers and cookies and stuff like that. And when you're done with the request specification, you switch over to the response specification. So here you begin specifying things that you know, the, the response must have when it's returned from the server. So here we say that the status code of the response should be equal to 200, so everything should be, should be okay. And uh, then when we're done defining our specification, we execute this specification. And uh, that's what we do when we call this uh, get or post or put method here. So this is essentially how it works. Um, so of course you can also specify a request body very easily. So here you can like, here you see an example that we have passed in a, a Java string, uh, but you can also pass in byte arrays and stuff like that as well. And you can also send in uh, Java objects. So here you can see a simple yeah, Pojo object here. So you just pass it into the body, and then you can, here in this example, we actually use an explicit object mapper. So here we use uh, JSON, so this will actually be serialized to JSON. But you don't have to do this, because normally you specify content type as well. And so then you, in those cases, you don't have to specify the uh, object mapper uh, explicitly like this. So in, this, so in this case, so if you, we would have specified content type with application, J, with application JSON, for example, uh, rest assured we'll scan the class path and you know, find some various uh, JSON marshalling frameworks that it can use. And if you would, would switch from JSON to XML, it will automatically look in the class path for well, XML frameworks that it can use to serialize this. So it's pretty cool. and. Uh, it works very well. Uh, but one of the cool things when, when I started using Groovy, because yeah, I said that this is built on top of Groovy. Why, why is it built on top of Groovy? Because Groovy is, has some really cool and nice features that I wanted to be able to incorporate. So one of the cool things with Groovy is that it's very, very simple to well, extract values out of JSON and XML documents. So I kind of wanted this like the staticness of Java. You know, this is the language that I'm used to and I work with every day. So you know, I wanted to, you know, be, be able to this kind of DSL thing. I wanted to to make this real simple and, and you know have it work with Java. But I wanted to have this dynamicity of Groovy when it comes to you know extracting values and validating values in the response. So if we imagine here that this uh, GET request to Lado here returns this. Uh, yeah, the JSON uh, structure that you see up here, then it's actually quite simple. And I would argue that it's actually quite readable as well. So what you begin doing is that you expect that the uh, response body of what's returned here by the uh, lotto resource will have a, a, a JSON path uh, that is lotto.lotto ID, and this path should be equal to 5. And so, obviously, if you look at this JSON document, what it does is that it goes into the document, and it goes into the Lotto, and Lotto ID extracts the value, and then we just validate that it's equal to, to 5. And, yeah, equal to here, this is just your standard uh, Hamcrest matcher. So, I mean, this is nothing, nothing fancy here. Um, and just to demonstrate one more thing here, so... If you look in here and you go to lotto winners dot winner id, you can see the path here. Uh, you can see that we're not we're not targeting an explicit winner or targeting an, an explicit winner id. So which one will be returned? Well, so this is one of the you know cool things. It's uh, so it it will return all of the matching uh, attributes or values. So we will get a list back. Uh, including 23 and 54. So we validate that against the, uh, the Hamcrest matcher has items. So, so this is actually pretty cool and very, very useful. I mean, you, you, you cannot have this kind of uh, easy uh, parsing, at least as far as I know, in static languages. So this is kind of a mixture of uh, both worlds, I think. It's pretty nice. And of course, usually you do not make, I mean, one request per 
per, you know, path you want to, to validate, you, it usually looks more something like this. So you can have multiple. And also there are some, some minor things here, but since this is actually groovy under the hood, so in groovy you usually, or when it comes to things like this, you can see at the lot of the winning numbers there. Uh, if, this, if you would have been written these in groovy, you would have to escape things and stuff like that. You don't usually have to do that if you're using rest assured, because uh, it does that for you. Uh, and another cool thing is that this kind of, you know, path syntax, it, it works the same way with XML documents, more or less. So I find this to be much simpler than XPath uh, when, uh, when I want to, you know, get values out of, the, out of an XML document. So it's, it's kind of the same, and it's very cool. And you can, of course, with rest assured, if you're more familiar with XPath and know that better, you can uh, use XPath as well. Um, okay, so what do you get back when you, if you only do a get to, you know, this resource, what do you get back? Well, of course you get a response back, just as you would have expected. And with this, you know, you can get everything that you, you want, you can get the headers and the status code and so on and so forth, and you can also use this, like, there is actually a class, or, yeah, a class called JSON path and XML path that you can use to, you know, extract values out of the a response if you want to, you know, use some of the values for other things. Or maybe validate them in another way. Uh, and you can, of course, get a response body, maybe as a string. Uh, but this is something that you, maybe you want to do quite often, so there's a shortcut for that. So you can just do get lotto as string. Or you can get it as a byte array or input stream, or, or get it as a Java object as well. So it's real simple. Um, all right, so, yeah, rest assured contains a lot of things. I would like to, like, have an hour on, on this, I think. Okay, so one of the things that it supports is, you know, authentication. So it supports, like, basic authentication and, uh, yeah, a lot of other stuff. And you can roll your own as well. And, yeah, you can probably see this because it's a big screen, but this is how you, how you use basic authentication. So it's, again, simple. You just give an ALF, uh, yeah, username and password. Or certificate authentication is also very simple. Just passing the URL and the password. And uh, yeah, this is also powerful because rest assured is really configurable as well. I mean, this is just one way to, to configure it. So this is some, usually something that you do, I mean, in your JUnit base class or in a JUnit rule or if you're using JUnits. So in this example here, we have set a, a base URI to myhost.org, another port, and we set a a base path and we want to use authentication. So what this, basic authentication. So what this means that now when we have configured this once, when we do our get request to slash XML here, we will actually end up at myhost.org with port 80 uh, slash resource slash XML and we will use basic authentication. So it's really uh, quite nice, I think. <laughs> um, you can configure a lot of stuff, uh, so you don't have to repeat yourself. Um, yeah, and I will just mention this also very briefly because <laughs> the paths here are actually groovy code that you're executing. So if you want to, you can actually use, you know, uh, and it's also groovy data structures that you're actually working with, so you can like leverage on this and, you know, use closures and stuff like that. And that may seem scary, and it is, if you're overusing it, but it, there are some simple cases, like if you want to search in an XML or JSON document. I mean, it's actually quite handy, but you shouldn't overdo it, since you specify these th things in strings. But, you know, maybe you specify XPath in strings, so I think this is perhaps more readable, at least when you get used to it, and more simple as well. And there's much, much more to say about this. Uh, yeah, I can go on and on and on, but I won't, so... Here is actually, if you're interested in this, you just Google for rest assured uh, Java. Uh, the product is hosted on Google Code, but uh, the code is on GitHub. Um, yeah, and I blog sometimes on uh, blog.jweb.com about this as well. Uh, yeah, so this was actually what I wanted to show you. Thank you very much. Oh, and if you have questions, please just come and talk to me. Thanks.